basically take most of your notes and throw them away because you get a sense that uh, what you studied and prepared to do is not what you need to do. And, uh, and that's good. I mean, I, I want to be overstudied rather than understudied. And uh, so I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction. I had definitions of terms and Bible verses to prove all the definitions of the terms, and, and I'm not going to do that this evening. I, I, I do appreciate your kindness, your, your uh, willingness to listen and, and uh, pay attention. I'm going to try to be shorter and let Brother, uh, Brother Brown uh, bring us home. I think he's got Brother Alltop getting a ditty ready between to get you all uh, awake. Do I need to turn it on? I thought I did that. I was so proud of myself on the way up here. <laughs> It shows me as being on. I've had this problem in my life before where I thought I was on and other people said I was off. So, <laughs> Will you come help me, brother? I'm apparently technologically disadvantaged. And beyond help, that is a true statement. But it's, it's on here. Okay, so there's two Baptist preachers that can't figure out. <laughs> All right. All right, Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, I do want you to see in uh, verse number 6, I know this is not my passage, but uh, I'm allowed to go backwards, verse number 6, and I want you to pay attention to the, the tense, past tense, present tense, future tense, okay? When we, what's that word? Were. Were. Yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Look at verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we, what? Were. Were, yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then look at this phrase. This is a neat phrase. He says in verse number 9, much more than. And then the tense changes. It says being, what? Being now, justified by his blood. And then watch the tense changes again, doesn't it? It says we, what? Shall be saved from wrath through him. And then verse number 10 goes back through this whole process again. Verse number 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. And there's that phrase again. You see that? Much more. That's pretty neat. Being, now it doesn't have the word now, but I mean that's basically what it's saying. Being reconciled, and then look at the tense again. We shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Let me just state this, because I'm, I, I guess I should be dealing more with verse number 11, but everybody and their brother has dealt with verse number 11. And in the Old Testament, you will read about atonement, and then atonement, and atonement, and atonement, and atonement, and atonement. But in the New Testament, you read, verse number 11, by whom we have now received it doesn't say we are receiving it doesn't say we will receive it says we have received this so salvation is a uh, I'm really going to mess myself up here salvation is a done deal but there are parts <laughs> okay because I showed you in verse number six past tense verse number eight past tense verse number nine present tense verse number nine future tense verse number ten past tense past tense present tense future tense now, my assigned subject matter is the future tense, okay? So if you look in verse number, uh, verse number 9, it says at the end of that verse, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And then if you look at verse number 10, it says we shall be saved, and it tells you how this works, the operation of this, and it says by his what? Life, okay. Let's pray. Father, I need you. I pray you to help me and uh, give me a clarity of mind, strength of body, and uh, Lord, give me direction. I pray that you'd lead me the right way. And I pray that you will be accomplished in the hearts and minds of the people here. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, and let's do turn over here. Go to John chapter 3, if you don't mind. John chapter 3 and verse number 36. You, you know these passages. That, that's, as we've stated, that it makes it a little difficult because I don't want to bore you. I don't want to waste your time. I never want, and you say, well, it's not a waste of time to, to read people's scripture, and I agree with you, but as a preacher, if people will take the time to come out and hear a sermon, 
come out and uh, hear preaching, I want to do everything I can to make that time as useful as I possibly can. I hope that, I hope that comes across the right way. But John chapter 3, verse number 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It's not something that one day I hope I get. It's something that I already possess right now. You may not see it, and I may not see it, but I have it. And I'm not, and by the way, uh, this is just a simple little illustration. Somebody left a nice little gun knife up here. Somebody said it was made in China, and I thought that was interesting because China would not have appro approved of a knife or a gun, but they, they made this combination. But if I said, I'm going to set this, uh, this knife slash gun on the table, and it's going to be there for eternity. Or if I said it's going to be there forever. Or if I said it's going to be there eternally. Now it doesn't matter what transpires to get that off of the table. If it moves, I was wrong. Okay? Now, if I take it back, I was a liar. Right? I, I said it was going to be there forever. I'm taking it back. That, I said it's going to be there for eternity. And then I remove it. That's a problem. I'm lying to you. What Brother Crotz, you know, I, I turn around, I go up here, Brother Crotz says, man, that looks like something I'd like to have. And he comes up here and he, he sneaks and he takes it and he runs off with it. Well, that means I, did not, I could not foresee the future to know that when I sat it here and I said it's going to be there for eternity and I walk away, somebody else is going to have another idea and come up and take it from the, from the table. I'm wrong either way, but there's a problem. Now, that's basically what we got to say if we believe that salvation is wishy-washy. Right. Yeah, right. God said, I've given you everlasting or I give unto them eternal life. Right. Now, if God said that, either A, if salvation is not eternal, then either A, God's lying or God's ignorant. God says, oh, I didn't foresee that happening. There's a, a nutcase that uh, I don't know if he preaches on the radio here as well, but he, he used to talk about raising the dead, Andrew Walmack. Any of y'all ever heard of Andrew Walmack? Man, that guy's crazy. <laughs> but he started saying, he, he came out, he put a little twist on this thing. I never heard anybody do this, but he put a little twist on this whole eternal life business. And he said, he said, it's not that you can lose your salvation, but. And anytime somebody says that, you know, okay, here we go. He said, but you can give it back. And I thought, well, that sounds really neat, buddy. I mean, can, can you give somebody else's back, you know, is what I'm thinking. But, but I want you to see in John 3.36, he says, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That, that's something I've already got, okay? And it's not... If you're here and you're saved, you put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God doesn't want you going around with doubts in your mind and heart because you will not be effective serving the Lord until you get assurance of your salvation. My, my wife grew up in a church of God home, and they, her dad had the mindset that if they were constantly afraid of whether they were still saved or not saved, that they would be better servants of the Lord. But I can tell you it has the opposite effect. When you get assurance of salvation and you know that what God's given you is yours, it's a gift from Him, that something changes in you to enable you to serve Him better. But it says there in the last part of that verse, And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But look what it says. But the wrath of God abideth on him. So in other words, lost people. Listen, if you're here, I, I'm not trying to be mean to you. If you're here tonight, people don't like terms anymore. I don't know what to do to help people. You're either saved or you're lost, okay? You're either uh, on your way to hell as a child of disobedience, which is what the Bible calls you, or you're saved, you're a child of God, you're on your way to heaven. There's no other, there's no other category you can get in on this thing. You can't be an in-betweener. It doesn't work like that. You're one or the other. You're either a child of God or you're a child of Satan. And... What you need to understand, if you're, if you're lost, you're not saved, you're not born again by the grace of God, God's wrath, you're not waiting one day that the wrath of God's going to be on you. You're already under the wrath of God. You may not, sin, I, I told you, you may not see my eternal life. You may not see my everlasting life, but I already have it. I may not see your wrath upon, or the, God's wrath upon you, but you already have it. 
Does that make sense? It's, it, people say, well, one of these days when I die, I'm going to get everlasting life. No, you'll step into what you already possess. Yep. The same thing's true for a lost person. A lost person says, well, I'll just go. I, I, people say the dumbest things. Well, I'll just go be a part of a party in hell. No, you won't. I'm telling you. Right. Right. You won't. Yeah. Right. Even the people there don't want you there. I mean, that's the truth. You're going to go as an intruder. Nobody's put out a welcome mat in hell for you. They don't want you there. They, I, I just, you say, well, you know, maybe my worst. Enemy. Nobody wants you there. But, but you're going to step into what's already on you. And that is God's wrath. The Bible talks about pulling the, the, the brand plucked out of the burning. It's, it's already on fire. That's why I think we ought to get a bit more of a sense of urgency about helping lost people see their need for Christ. They are already under God's condemnation. You're not waiting for God to open a book or close a book or, or, or lower a gavel. You're already judged. And it's not good. It's not good. Now, that's not the subject matter of what I'm dealing with, but I'm trying to show you when we get back here to Romans chapter 5 and we see in verse number 6, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse number 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is talking about things of the past and, and what happened, Christ died for us. But look at verse number 9, it says, much more than being now justified by his blood. See, I'm not even waiting for justification. It's so hard for us to get, is it not? I, I think one of the greatest truths that you can learn, and, and some people use the phrase, uh, the, uh, the word standing in state. And every time I've tried to use that, standing somewhere preaching, I say, oh my goodness, which one's which? Yeah. And so I said, forget all that. I'm not going to sound as smart as the next guy, but forget it. And I said, it's going to be practice and it's going to be position. For me, because I'm a dummy, I need Bible for dummies, okay? Yeah positionally, that's what I have in Jesus Christ that never changes. Yeah. It's unwavering. I'm justified right now. My yeah. practice is my daily activity, my daily walk with God. That is up and down. Right. I wish it weren't. I've, I, I've said this maybe here, I don't know. I've said this several places. I think the greatest responsibility of the Christian life is our position in Christ is so lofty, it's up here. Our practice in Christ is often down here. The greatest responsibility of us in the Christian life is to close that gap. Yeah. Not by bringing the position down, but by bringing the practice up. Okay? So, so we see there in my position right now in Christ, the Bible says in, in verse number 9 uh, that I'm already, right now, right now, if you're saved, right this moment, isn't that a blessing? You're justified. Now, justified, we've already said it, it, it's declared righteous. People say, well, it means made righteous. No, you've got to be careful with that. It's declared because men justify themselves. That doesn't mean they make themselves righteous. They are declaring their righteousness. This is a declaration by God of your righteousness right there. Okay? So much more than being now justified by his blood. And then I'm going to skip that last part in verse 9. And then go to verse 10, it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. I love that. Man, what a blessing. We were enemies. These people going around saying, me and, me and God, we're a homeboys. Uh, homeboys must, be, must mean a little something different from what I remember. You and God are at odds. And it's not God's fault. God's angry with you. If you're unsaved, God's angry with you. No, no, wait, whoa, 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 we don't talk like that. You know, God just loves everybody. Well, God manifested his love for everybody. Yeah. Now, look, I'm not going to get caught up in it. People have all these debates. I, don't, I think, I don't know, are independent Baptists the only ones that fight over everything? We like to fight. We like to fight. <laughs> and I, so I'm not going to get into the debates and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to tell you something. The Bible does say that God is angry with the wicked every day. So God doesn't look down and see, you know, the sins of this world and say, oh, that's no big deal. God's angry. And you say, well, it's not fair. Well, here's the way I look at it. God said, look, that makes me angry. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even look upon what you're doing. But I'm going to give you a way of escape through my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And if you spit in the face of God giving you that kind of a gift and you say, I don't want your son, I've got to tell you, you're getting whatever's coming to you. And I, you, you don't expect me to feel sympathetic for you. If you think you can spit in the face of God and put your fist in God's face and say, I don't want your gift and expect that it's just going to be hunky-dory in the end, you can forget it. Because God is righteous in whatever happens to you. And you, 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 you're going to be without excuse. You're not going to be able to say, well, no, I didn't know or I, I didn't have a way. No, you had a way. You tried to bypass it and go your own way. And God's, God's not going to put up with that. But verse number 10, he says, we were reconciled, meaning I'm already reconciled to God. God's not angry with me. Yeah. Amen. I mean, Brother Knox said, we're, we have peace with God. That's not the peace of God, it's peace with God. God and I, are, we are at peace with each other, not because God said, okay, well, I'll, com- I'll compromise to you, you compromise to me. No, I had to be reconciled to God. Notice the wording there. It doesn't say in verse number 10, by the way, for if when we were enemies, God was reconciled to us. It doesn't say that. It says we were reconciled to God because God wasn't at fault. You were. I was. People think, well, you know, I'm not too bad. Then you're not ready to be saved. You're just not ready. You, You just don't have any understanding of how bad you are. Even when we finally come around to the conclusion, and we're, we've talked about it all week. We said, man, we're just bad. We don't even know the half of it. <laughs> if we could see ourselves the way God could see man, we, we wouldn't know what to do with it. Verse number 10, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, here it is again, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What I'd like to do, just a few moments, I'd like to focus on the end of verse number 9, And the end of verse number 10 where it says we shall be. That's future. See, a lot of this stuff's talking about things of the past, things we have right now. But this is, it changes. Now keep in mind, when I say future, future is anything from this moment forward. It could be now. Now, You understand what I'm saying? So if if I say, uh, I can't even fully read what time it is back there. But if I say it's 739, 740 is future. Does everybody understand that? I understand next week's future, but so is 740. Okay? And, and the Bible's talking about something future. It says we shall be saved from wrath through him. And then it says we shall be saved. Uh, we, we shall be saved by his life. Wrath. Wrath. Now, a lot of people have a different idea about the judgment seat of Christ. A lot of people have a different idea about Daniel's 70th week. A lot of people have a different idea about future things. And may I just say this? I kind of understand why people have a different viewpoint of it. You know why? Because it hasn't happened yet. Right? If we're struggling to have the same view on things that have already occurred... I mean, right? People will kill each other over that Old Testament salvation, won't they? I mean, Brother Knox has been labeled a heretic and all sorts of stuff, and it's, it's insane. It's insane. I, I, I made a mistake one time of getting into an argument with somebody over Brother Knox. I don't know why I did it. But, no, I'm serious. I, I did. I, because I, I, I love Brother Knox. Brother Knox has been a real blessing to me. Uh, I didn't say he was a good man. I just said I like him. I didn't say he was good. I just, I mean, he's pretty pitiful, but I like him. It, it was grace. It was grace. But, but, but they, they were saying, well, he's not even dispensational. I said, what are you talking about? Come on. Do you know why they said that? Because he doesn't believe Old Testament salvation. I, I don't think you mind me giving this information out. He doesn't believe Old Testament salvation is by faith and works. And those guys were, I mean, they had him for supper. And so I made the mistake. I said, well, you, you don't even know him. And I said, I know Brother Knox. And I got into this battle and... I learned pretty quick, just leave these knuckleheads alone. Because you're not getting anywhere with them. So I said, he is dead. I tried to throw out all the arguments and defend him. And, and he wouldn't have done that for me, but I was trying to do that for him, you know. Uh, if he would have said, oh, listen, they're saying that about Brother Ray. Well, at least it's not me. But I was trying to, you know, to, to defend him. And I thought, these guys don't, they, they don't understand what they're talking about. If we can't even agree on stuff that's passed, listen, there, you got to, look, I believe 100% in a pre-tribulation rapture. 
I don't believe I'm going through 15 seconds of Daniel's 70th week. Okay, I'm not one of these guys that believes half of it's already behind. You believe that? Have at it. I don't believe that. I believe all seven years still ahead. The Lord may shorten some of that time somehow. That's between him and himself, but he may do that. Okay? I believe all that. But I'm not going to be surprised if I've got some details wrong. I'm not going to be surprised because they'll say, well, God's wrath doesn't show up until this point. I, I look at Daniel's 70th week and I say, it looks like Satan's wrath and God's wrath and man's wrath. It looks like every kind of wrath you can imagine is going on. Yeah. Well, what the Bible just said yeah. was, Amen. we shall be saved from Amen. wrath Amen. through him. Amen. Okay? You say, well, it doesn't show. I mean, I've heard it, guys. I, I don't, I, I've learned. I've learned just stay out of these arguments because who cares? Sure, man, believe whatever you want to believe. I hope you do go through it. You know, whatever. <laughs> I don't I hope you have a great time. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Get some more Chef Boy RD, man. I don't care. I really don't. I don't care. Okay? I, I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just beyond caring at this point. I, I mean, you want to go through it that bad? We might even pray for you. Lord, would you please, this dear brother really wants to go through part of this so that he can talk about his Christian manhood. Would you just give him a little sampling of it? My Bible tells me that I am not appointed under wrath. Okay? Now, look, look with me. I've got several verses. I'm going to skip most of them. Go to, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm trying to keep a promise to Brother Brown, and uh, I, I really want to do that. First. Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 9 the Bible says but for God hath not appointed us to wrath Amen. but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. now here's here's the key to this whole thing okay we I could go to Revelation chapter 6 and read to you about wrath I could go to Revelation 11 read to you about wrath I could go to Revelation 19 and read to you about wrath You've got Daniel's 70th week coming up, wrath. You've got the great white throne judgment coming up, wrath. Some people say the judgment seat of Christ, wrath. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't know that it's going to be the cakewalk you want it to be, but if there's wrath, I'm saved from it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, now here's, here's what I want us to see. This is, to me, this is the biggest deal, and, I, and I'll, I'll be done. It says in verse number 9, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That's part of the detail. When you come down to verse number 10, it says we shall be saved by his what? Amen. We've been talking a whole lot about everything that happens because of his death. Yeah. Have we not? We've been focused on that a lot, yes. and rightfully so. But what you just heard yeah. is there are also benefits because of his, his life. So when you get asked the question, are you going to have to go through wrath? Here's the only question you need to ask. Okay, you ready? This is going to be really shallow. Is Christ alive? Okay. You think we're getting ready for God's wrath? Okay, hold on, time out. Slow down. Is Christ alive? Because if the answer to that is yes, then the answer to the question about me getting wrath is no. Okay? Let me just give you a few Bible verses. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Look at verse number 25. See, it's not, I mean, it is a blessing that Christ died on the cross. It is a blessing that he took our sins upon him. It, all that, every, I mean, everything about this Bible is a blessing when you view it through God's eyes. I understand that. But sometimes this is a part we kind of neglect, is it not? We don't worry so much about the fact that he is still alive, but that's, that's a big deal. Uh, we could go to the cities of refuge and we could talk about the high priest. Living. We could go through all that stuff. But I think two, two Bible verses I'll give you, and that should settle the whole thing for you. Am I going to get God's wrath? The question you need to ask, is Christ alive? Yes. Hebrews 7, verse number 25, 
Wherefore he is able to also uh, able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he what ever liveth Amen. to make intercession for them. Go to Revelation chapter number one. Revelation chapter number one. As long as Christ is alive, I'm safe. You ever find out he's dead, we're in trouble. Okay. Revelation chapter 1, and look with me if you will, verse number 18. I am he that what? Liveth. But that's not all. He, I mean, he, he didn't stop. He said, and was dead, and behold, I'm alive until, no, no it doesn't say that. I am alive, what does he say? Forevermore. And because he lives... Because he lives, they say, well, what about Daniel's 70th week? There's going to be wrath. I'm not worried about it. Amen. Not because I've been good. You understand? Not because I've done, yeah. I've done it's, it's Christ. Right. Well, what, what, about the, you know, the, what about the judgment seat of Christ? How bad do you think it's going to be? Look, all I know is it can't be so bad that it crosses the threshold from chastening to wrath. So whatever happens at the judgment seat of Christ, I am confident that I will survive it because it's not wrath. Well, what about, you know, what about the great white throne judgment? What about people being cast into the lake of fire? All that is wrath. And the Bible told me that's not my appointment because Christ lives. And because he lives, I'm saved from wrath. Whether it's now or whether it's to come, it's not for me. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the Bible. I thank you for this conference. I thank you for Brother